When hosting a cocktail party, snacks are critical. And today I'm excited to share three yummy snack ideas that your guests are going to love. I actually created this menu for my series, How to Host on the Design Network. So once you're done watching this yummy video, be sure to head over for some great tips and tricks for hosting your next cocktail party. We're getting started with a variety of nuts for this recipe. So today I'm using some pecans, some cashews, and some almonds. Now I'm using raw nuts because I'm going to be roasting them in the oven and you don't want to double roast your nuts. So all I'm going to do is lay these out in a single layer on a baking sheet and then into the oven they're going to go at 350 degrees for between 10 and 12 minutes. You want to keep a good eye on them because nuts do tend to burn quickly. As soon as they're done you can take them out of the oven and let them cool. In the meantime we are going to get some butter heated up in a skillet and to that we are going to add some brown sugar. Once the brown sugar has started to dissolve, we are going to flavor it with some awesome chopped rosemary and a little bit of cayenne pepper. To this mixture, we are going to add the roasted nuts. We're going to stir this all together well until the nuts are evenly coated and then you're going to pour them onto a parchment lined baking sheet to cool. I'm going to sprinkle these with just a little bit of salt so that you get a nice salty, sweet, spicy bite and they're ready to serve. Next up, we're making some beautiful herbed popcorn that's really simple to make but very, very flavorful. And it all starts with some stove popped popcorn. Now you could use microwave popcorn for this recipe, but there's really nothing quite like stove pop popcorn. So I'm starting with a large pot over medium high heat and to that I'm going to add some canola oil. The real secret to making great stove pop popcorn is knowing when your oil is ready. And the way we do that is by adding two kernels to the bottom of the pan. As soon as those two kernels pop, you'll know your oil is hot and ready to rock. All you're going to do is add your kernels to the bottom of the pot and make sure they're in an even layer. Then on goes the lid and you're going to listen for the first pops. As soon as you hear those first pops happen, you're going to shake your pot every 10 seconds or so until your popcorn is fully popped. This process usually takes between a minute and two minutes. You'll know it's ready when the timing between pops starts to space out. Be sure to keep that popcorn moving because you don't want it to burn. At that point, you want to take it off the heat, let it finish popping, and move on to your tasty flavoring. So I've got a small saucepan heating up, and to that I'm going to add some butter. Once my butter's melted, I'm going to add some fresh thyme leaves, some freshly chopped rosemary, and some red chili flakes. I'm going to finish this off with some salt and pepper and then pour it over my popped popcorn. Finally, I'm going to add some freshly grated Parmesan to this, put the lid back on and shake it all up until it's well coated. And there you have it, great popcorn for your guests to snack on all night long. Finally, we are going to put together a simple but elegant cheese board. Now on every great cheese board, four flavors are represented. You want a sharp cheese, a smoked cheese, a brie cheese, and a blue cheese. I like to place my cheese north, south, east, and west so nothing is touching. When you're serving a wheel of brie like this, one trick I love is to cut the first slice out of the wheel of brie. Nobody wants to be the first person to cut into a wheel of brie, so do it for them by cutting out a small slice. We are going to jazz things up with some fresh honey, some lovely red grapes, some crunchy walnuts, and finally some beautiful fresh figs. How simple was that to put together? Minimum effort, maximum visual impact. I am. I'm a genius. I hope you'll give these tasty recipes a try and if you do, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchen. And don't forget to head over to the Design Network to check out my latest episode of How to Host for great tips and tricks for hosting your next cocktail party. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Domestic Geek because there's lots more deliciousness where this came from.